again prolapse. Prolapse is a protrusion of an organ or structure beyond its normal confines. Classification of prolapse. We have anterior vaginal wall prolapse, posterior vaginal wall prolapse, apical vaginal prolapse. Anterior vaginal wall prolapse include urethrocele, urethral descent, cystocele, bladder descent, cystourethrocele descent of both bladder and urethra. Posterior vaginal wall prolapse, recto seal, rectal descent, interior seal, small bowel descent, apical vaginal prolapse descent, apical vaginal prolapse, urethrovaginal, uterovaginal, sorry, uterine descent with inversion of vaginal apex, vault. Post hysterectomy inversion of vaginal apex. Cysto, urethrocin, rectocin, enterocin, uterine prolapse, procedentia. Pelvic organ prolapse is a very common problem with a prevalence of 41 to 50 percent of women over the age of 40 years. Of 41 to 50 percent of women over the age of 40 years. Uterovaginal prolapse is caused by failure of interaction between the levator ani muscles and the ligaments and fascia that support the pelvic organs. The levator ani muscles are puborectalis, pubococcygeus, and iliococcygeus. They are attached on each side of the pelvic side wall from the pubic ramus anteriorly, pubococcygeus, over the obturator internus fascia to the ischial spine to form a bowel shaped muscle following the pelvic outlet and supporting the pelvic organs. There is a gap between the fibers There is a gap between the fibers of the puborectalis on each side to allow passage of the urethra, vagina and rectum called the urogenital hiatus. The levator muscles support pelvic organs and prevent excessive loading of the ligaments and fascia. Here, this is the urethra, external urethral sphincter, urogenital diaphragm. Vagina, sternal anal sphincter, this is the anus, um, anal sphincter, this is the anus, there are three levels of supporting ligaments and fascia which work together to support the uterus, vagina and associated organs. Level 1, Apical Support, is provided by the uterosacral ligament, which attach to the cervix, which attach the cervix to the sacrum, support of the vaginal wall that are attached to the cervix. Defects in Level 1, Support, can be seen on examination by the descent of the uterus within the vagina. In women who have Previously undergone hysterectomy. Level 1 support defect will manifest as vaginal vault prolapse. 
part defect will manifest as vaginal vault prolapse. So it's important during the procedure to reattach the uterosacral ligaments to the vaginal vault. Support is provided by fascia that surrounds the vagina, both anteriorly and posteriorly, lying between the vagina and the bladder, pubocervical fascia, or rectum, rectovaginal fascia. These facial sheets fuse together at the vaginal edge and then are attached to the pelvic side wall, fusion to the fascia overlap, fusing, fusing to the fascia overlying of later internus. This facial attachment results in the vagina lying as a flattened tube laterally at rest. The vagina lying as a flattened tube laterally at rest. The fascia providing level 2 support will lead to prolapse of the vaginal wall into the vaginal lumen, causing anterior or posterior vaginal prolapse. The bladder or rectum will prolapse behind the vaginal wall due to the facial attachment to it. On examination, the affected vaginal wall will be seen bulging into the vagina. Here, as you see, this is what bladder, cervix, rectum. This is what uterosacral ligament from the cervix to sacrum ligament from the cervix to sacrum. This is what vesico vaginal space. Vesical fascia. This retrovaginal space. This so this is the transverse cervical ligament. Hugo vesical ligament. Uterosacral ligament. Support is provided. Support is provided by the fascia of the posterior vagina, which is attached at its caudal end to the perineal body. The perineal body is a dense connective tissue mass underneath the lower third of the posterior vaginal wall and is the insertion of the posterior vaginal fascia, fibers of the vital ani and the transverse perineal muscle. It is the perineal body that is torn or cut by episiotomy during childbirth. Defect of the perineal body usually cause the development of lower posterior vaginal wall prolapse. Level 1 defect, defect in the uterosacral ligament lead to what? Defect in the uterosacral ligament lead to what? Vault prolapse. Level 2 defect in the bladder, also in the rectum. Level 3 defect in the perineal body, perineal body. supply are vital for the maintenance of position of the pelvic structures and are influenced by congenital 2% of symptomatic prolapse occur in the liparous women due to congenital weakness of the connect connective tissue genetic genital prolapse is rare in Africo-Caribbean women 
Genital prolapse is rare in Africa, Caribbean women. Childbirth and pregnancy. Parity is associated with increasing prolapse. Prolapse occurring during pregnancy is rare, but is thought to be mediated by the effect of progesterone and relaxing. Abdominal pressure outside pregnancy, as in chronic cough or constipation. Aging. The process of aging can result in loss of collagen and weakness of fascia and connective tissue, as seen in postmenopause and as consequences of estrogen deficiency. Postoperative. Poor attention to vaginal vault support. At the time of hysterectomy leads to wall tension to vaginal vault support. At the time of hysterectomy leads to vault prolapse. In approximately 1% of cases. Symptoms from pelvic organ prolapse. Direct. Due to the prolapsed organ. A sensation of vaginal bulge heaviness or a visible protrusion at or beyond the introitus, lower abdominal or backache, or dragging discomfort, relieved by lying or sitting. Due to organ dysfunction secondary to displacement from the anatomical position, it depends on which other organs are involved in the prolapse. Difficulty in voiding urine or emptying the bowel and prolapse. Difficulty in voiding urine or emptying the bowel and sensation of incomplete emptying of bladder or rectum. Urinary or fecal incontinence may also be present. Difficult sexual activity. Vaginal bleeding from a prolapse that is external and becomes ulcerated. stages of descent. Stage 1 where the prolapse does not reach the hymen. Stage 2 where the prolapse reaches the hymen. Stage 3 where the prolapse is mostly or wholly outside hymen. When the uterus prolapse wholly outside this is termed procedentia. Cystocene, rectocene, tyrosine, and this procedation. All the uterine body outside. This is called also procedation. The vagina, and look, it is ulcerated. Unhealthy looking. For women with symptoms of pressure or vaginal bulge only, there is rarely need to arrange any investigation. There is rarely need to arrange any investigation. Eurodynamic assessment. Functional test of the lower bowel as Endoanal ultrasound for anal sphincter defects, rectal manometry, flexible sigmoidoscopy, and defecating proctogram. Conservative treatment, pelvic floor muscle exercise. The use of supportive vaginal support pessaries its use can be very effective at relieving symptoms and has the advantage of indication for pessary treatment are patient wish as a therapeutic test, child bearing not complete, medically unfit, 
child being not complete, medically unfit, during and after the pregnancy, while awaiting surgery, elderly. A range of shapes of pessary is available. It is usual practice to replace pessary every six months and to examine the patient for sign of vaginal ulceration. Complication usually minor as bleeding and discharge, incarceration, and rare cases of rectovaginal or vesicovaginal fistula formation. These different shapes of vaginal peasants. For pelvic organ prolapse, the procedure chosen depends on which compartment is affected. Whether the woman wishes to retain her uterus affected. Whether the woman wishes to retain her uterus. Whether the vaginal or abdominal route of surgery is chosen. Collapse surgery. Remove or reduce the vaginal bulge. Restore the ligament or tissue. Support to the apex, anterior, and posterior vagina. Replace associated organs in their correct positions. Retain sufficient vaginal length and width to allow intercourse. Restore the perineal body. Correct or prevent urinary incontinence. Correct or prevent fecal incontinence. Correct obstructed defecation is correct obstructed defecation. Surgery is performed through either the vagina to restore the ligament tissue support to the apex, anterior by anterior repair, posterior posterior repair. Repair of the perineal body. Post hysterectomy vault prolapse, attaching the vaginal vault to the right sacrospinous ligament with non absorbable or slowly absorbable sutures. Or by abdominal approach to perform sacrocolpopexy is an option that will provide excellent and durable long term action that will provide excellent and durable long term cure. In the last three to five years there has been an increasing number of women wishing to avoid hysterectomy during prolapse surgery. So both sacrospinous fixation and sacrocolpopexy can be performed by attaching a mesh or suture to the cervix rather than the vaginal vault. This is the suture. This as you see to the right sacrospinous ligament sutured. Here we palpate the sacrospinous ligaments by our finger. Then we touch it by sponge, the sacrospinous ligament. As you see, this is the mesh bridge. This is the vagina cervix. Fixation to the sacrum, sacral calpopexy. 